Let's all right, all right, enough screwing around. Let's finish this. And they did. They did. And, and we we probably made a critical mistake. And that is that right off the bat saying instead yeah, of closing with it? Well, no, I mean it, it, if people think we're blaming the series on the refs, no, we're not. No. We're not. It's not at all. <laughs> Don't get it. To, don't take it wrong. No. It's a frustration, a frustrating part of playing against a player like Giannis, and and Blake has he gets his share of calls where Blake jumps into somebody, knocks yes. them down, and the somebody that got jumped into gets called for a foul. Yeah. That's the way the game is officiated when you have a big, strong, Look, bigger than everybody, stronger than everybody type. Player. And there were other calls that the Pistons got that they didn't deserve. There was was it Reggie Jackson who came in and just blatantly charged in on uh, on Pavel Datsuk. <laughs> and on Giant Pavel. Yeah. And Giant Pavel was planted. I mean, he had roots growing into the ground. Then he goes right into him, and they call the block on, on Giant Pavel. And that just, I mean, it, it goes the other way, too. It just, it was an extraordinary amount of fouls being called on the Pistons. That's not why they lost. They lost because Milwaukee is light year is better. Light year is better. But the Pistons gave a heck of an effort. They had six, everybody had six fouls to give. And, I think they kind of forgot that towards the end because they were too worried about guys getting fouled out. I found it interesting that when you're looking for more big men to get in there and hack away at Tinky Poo Poo, mm -hmm. why didn't they use uh, Pachulia? Where was Zaza? I don't know. He's got six to give. And he knows how to and, do and it. And he knows how to do it. <laughs> he knows how to do it and debilitate you too. Uh, but he, he's the only guy that was a DNP coach's decision for the Pistons last night. But I thought that that would be, you know, one way to kind of help stem the flow a little bit there. Drummond is a microcosm of the Pistons. Will never be worth what he's paid, but you won't get fair value at a trade. So in essence, they're a no man's land. We're doomed. Well, they kind of are. And Gore has talked after the game about that uh, a little bit, too. We'll hear that in the 11 o'clock uh, eleven o'clock hour. Blake Griffin is not a superstar player. That's from an unnamed texter. Well, here's why he's not, because he doesn't get as many calls as a well, superstar. See, I think do. he does when he's healthy. I disagree with that. I think Blake is the kind of player that creates contact and goes to the line, in my opinion. I mean, he didn't – how many free throws did he shoot this series? I can't imagine it was that many. I think he went to the line once last night. Do you have the numbers in front of you? Uh, he was two for two from the line last night. That's okay. what I know. I'm just looking up his uh, – is free throws. I mean, if you look at a healthy Blake Griffin, he's shooting a lot more than two free throws in a game. Well, he's shooting seven a game, so it's not like it's a, a, a huge total. Uh, that's, that's getting to the line. That's getting to the line. Did you see ESPN's tweet last night? They just kept crapped all over the city of Detroit with their tweet about our recent playoff failures. Well, thank you. Uh, I mean, at this point, understand that it's all true. It's all true. It was brought up on this show yesterday how it's been forever since each team is on a kind of an epic losing streak in the postseason. Not as much the um, not as much the Red Wings, but it's 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 pretty uh, it's been pretty bad here. Well, it's about to get worse tonight. Why is that? Because HBO's got real sports, oh, right. and apparently they've got a story about uh, District Detroit and the unfulfilled promises um, about the housing development that is supposed to have taken place to this point and yep. how it's lacking to this point. They got the arena done and in time when they said they were going to get it done, but nothing else has really gotten off the ground. And I think there's some fair criticism to that. I'll be interested to watch the, the real sports tonight to see what, how – how it actually is uh, conveyed, but the the one minute trailer that they've shown online, it's not a good light. No, and please make sure you do watch it because I don't have HBO, <laughs> so <laughs> I want to know what they have to say. Uh, another one here: whining about calls in a twenty point loss at home. Wow, we've hit a new low in the city. No, well, I mean, look, I mean, <laughs> it was a, it was part of the game story for sure. There was the ref you sucks uh, refs you suck chant <laughs> that Blake participated in on the free throw line when he was standing there after he'd been called for a foul. And I was like, Blake just wants, he just needs a tech. He, just he, needs want, a tech. he wanted he out wants of that a game. Man. He wants a tech. He's going to get a tech. Those last two fouls that he picked up, yeah. were like within 30 seconds of each other, he wanted out of that game and it's okay. Like they were, they were, there was two minutes left or whatever it was. He just, he wanted out. Yeah. He deserved to get out because it was just like, all right, I'm done. Uncle. Well, and that's 
That's exactly what happened. When Milwaukee wanted to, they they hammered Detroit. It would have been interesting in the postgame press conference when he was asked about the chant if he had replied thusly. This would be the advice I would give to Blake Griffin. Okay. Question comes in from the media. Blake, did you – something to the effect of did you hear about the, the chant? Uh, did, were you able to understand the chant that the fans were – were uh, yelling at the uh, the referees. If I were Blake Griffin, I would have said, what was the chant? What did they yell? And then you could play so the role of the reporter. They, they were saying, refs, you suck. They said, they said, refs, you suck? What did they say? They said, refs, you suck. They said, refs, you suck. Yes, they were, like, they were chanting. They were chanting it? Yes. Like, like they were chanting, like, refs, you suck. Refs, you that was what that that was. Refs, you suck. So basically, you would play dumb to yes. get an opportunity to take the microphone <laughs> exactly. and tell the refs that they suck. Yes, hundred percent. But, but do it in an innocent, not get fined way. Right. I'm just asking questions. Right. I know. And, and then just shake your head incredulously and go, "Wow, refs, you suck, huh?" That's something. They yeah. the fans really got after him, huh? Yeah. Well, the fans are entitled to their fans, opinion. Yeah. If the fans want to say refs, you suck. I mean, then you guys, I don't know you how the NBA is going to stop that. <laughs> I would never say refs, you suck. Well, I can't do that. I mean, I'll get fined if I do it. But if the fans are saying it, and then and they said what? Refs, you suck. Okay. In asking the question, do it like thirty-five times. Say refs, you suck. And again, that's not what the Pistons. No, it is luck. This definitely was part of the frustration last night, but I don't think it would have made a difference in the game. It might have made a difference in the entire series had the Pistons got every single call. But then again, maybe not. All right, Gator, it's draft week. And there's a lot of stuff floating around. Maybe the biggest rumor right now 